Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City. Connor, good to chat with you again. Um, can I start by getting uh, any team news, if I may? And, and more precisely, is there an update on the extent of Lee Novak's injury? Just an update. It's, you know, there's, it's going to look probably similar to, to how it looked against Cambridge, um, potentially with, with a late, maybe a late inclusion. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Is there at all a, a time scale at, at this moment in time? Uh, on on how long you'll be out for? It was just Lee. Lee, yeah. Um, again, we, we've sort of looking at this week of he's going to get the final assessment, which will give us a really good indicator on on um, the time frame. But uh, for us, he's, he's looking quite good at the minute. So um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Fundamentally, is he missing from tomorrow's squad? Yeah, at the minute, yeah, he is. Um, sort of late inclusion would be potentially we're looking for um, some really good news, but we we, we shall see um, in, in in short notice, really. Harry Pritchard, is it likely he'll be back fit and available for for tomorrow's game, or is it too soon? Yeah, we've we've um, with Pritch, it's he's been training light uh, at the moment. Um, with the physical department, so we're just looking to ease him in um, with his specific injury. So um, he's not not available for tomorrow. What is the specific injury with with Harry? It's just something that he had before he came to the club, um, and which is, like I said before, some players have have ongoing problems, and and it's it's that for him. Any other knocks or niggles to report from Saturday's game? No, no, clean, clean bill of health. What are your thoughts on Saturday's game more generally, and, and how and how it turned out? I think there were there were a lot of positives. Um, you know, we we felt in control for parts of the game, um, but also felt that they had uh, moments and spells where they they controlled the game. Um, I think for us, we just took confidence that we were playing the top of the league, and and we we showed what we're about. Um, and, you know, we, we ideally just getting better and better every game and, and hopefully people are seeing that as well. If you were to look at the game... Lost him, yeah. From... Have you still got me? Um, I think I've got you now. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, that's all right, mate. I'll do it. I'll do that one again. Yeah. Um, yeah, just on on the game more precisely. If you were to look at the the context of the table going into it, you would say that at a point on the road away at the league leaders is is a really good result where you are. But if you were to look at the game in isolation, particularly the chances that you had in in the second half, and most notably Gareth, which I still don't know how it didn't cross the line. Uh, do you feel like you did enough to to get all three points? Yeah, I think, you know, if the the pitch isn't as bad in that area, we we probably nick the game 1-0. So, like you say, it's um, it was kind of like, why is that happening to us moment? Um, unbelievable how that's actually kept out. So, um, I think no one would have been um, maybe too surprised if we uh, would have actually won that game. So, uh, yeah, like you say, confidence and, uh, you know, a good, a good thing to see. I wanted to ask you about the, the style of play that you adopted at, at times in the game, Connor, uh, and particularly uh, from the back into the midfield area. It, it seemed like Paul D and Anthony and a lot of more of the deeper players seemed a lot more comfortable on the ball, a lot happier to, to play it around the back line and be more patient in their possession and, and style of play. Is that something that you've been working on specifically in the extended break? Yeah, um, obviously we had the time to to work more on the training field and um that was something that we we felt would really improve this group of players um just just to, you know regarding what system we're playing um you know where the free players are um how do we find the spare man um sort of like patterns of play to get us out um but ultimately we, that, we do all that to score goals um and unfortunately we've not scored any goals but i think some of the some of the play and some of the bits were were you know brilliant to watch brilliant to see and as coaches, you start to see that transfer from training to games, and and I think it gives the the players confidence as well. I think the the next challenge 
would be for us to take that and, and, and hurt teams a little bit more, um, but also to keep keep mixing up our style of play to make sure that we are unpredictable and, and one of those teams that, you know, if you let us play, we, we can. Uh, but also if if you come out to press us, you've got to be careful because we might go straight into our top line and, and really hurt you and miss players out for them. So um, we want to be unpredictable. How much of a balance is it when you're setting up the team for specific games? Naturally, the defensive structure is clear to see. The record speaks for itself. But you've mentioned there about trying to capitalise on that good periods of play and be more clinical in the, in the final third. So how big a balance is it for you not trying to commit too many going forward to get the goals without trying to lose the defensive shape that you've shown so often recently? Yeah, it's, you know, I think we still... We still put bodies forward um, enough, more than enough bodies forward. I think our structure behind the ball has allowed us to to regain possession uh, high up the field, um, which has really helped and stopped any counter attacks. I think we look at the stats; we we hardly get countered anymore um, because of the work and the communication and the and what we're asking of the guys. And you know, I, th- I just think the the sort of the final bit. Would be for us to to add more goals to the to the games, uh, but that's something that we're continuously working on. Um, and I think defensively, we've just got to keep showing that that discipline. We've we've just got to capitalize capitalize a little bit more in the final third and and improve our play because you look at the quality in the squad, and and there is goals in the squad. So um, you know we've just got to keep keep being hard to beat, but also keep looking to to affect them and, and create chances and get crosses into the box and, and win second balls and play from there as well. So we've got to try and mix it up. I asked Mark a similar question after the game on Saturday, but how enjoyable was it seeing Danny Rowe in a Bradford City shirt? And what did you make of his performance on debut? No, it was it was good to see Danny. Um, obviously, uh, he's very exciting. Um, even, you know, for everybody that watching the game, as soon as he got a sniff or half a yard, it was bang, you know, so... It's very really exciting, and with Danny, we we're getting to know him even more, and how we can adapt to get the best out of Danny um, in and out of possession. So, I think as time goes on, we'll we'll start to see um, them relationships build, and and for him to make an even even bigger impact. How will you look to to best use him moving forward, Connor? Particularly when you welcome Lee back into the frame when he's fit and available. Is it a case of one in, one out, or is there an appetite potentially to see them both on the field playing together? Yeah, I think it's um, we potentially could play with both of up front, and there's different formations that would allow that. Um, I think the rationale behind why we would do that would have to be clear, and um, what we're trying to get out of the game, um, also not. Um, taking too much away from the defensive side. I think for us, Danny, Danny is a nine, um, definitely a nine. Um, I think if you take him into midfield, you start taking away his strengths and you start maybe um, coming away from his game and being high up the pitch where he can thread uh, through balls, he can have shots off both feet. So um, I, I think it's something that gives us options to play different formations and also allows us to rotate when, when Lee is back and etc. So, yeah. Uh, another player that made his City debut uh, was Jordan Stevens. It was good to see him come on in the last 20 minutes. Um, excited by what he offered just in that snapshot? Yes. Um, again, Jordan, you could see how quick he is. You could see how um, hard he works, how direct he is. Um, he was probably a little bit um, unhappy with his, his his final final delivery at times because, you know, if when he does it in training, it's it's bang on, so we're you know we're not um, you know we know how, how much quality he, ha- he has got. Is it likely that he may start tomorrow night? Um, well, Jordan, you know he's he's um, he's not done any any harm to to that. Um, so I think we we have to monitor it and monitor the uh, the match loads of the other players. Um, but I think yeah, Jordan will will um, start to you know start in teams as well in the upcoming week, uh, weeks. On that point more generally, and I realise that it's only the second game in what will be a very hectic schedule that's uh, on the horizon for you, but how big a factor will squad rotation be and, and how much do you have to consider that even in the early stages of this, of this schedule? Yeah, um, like I said before, it's going to be, it's going to be really important. Um, and just to, um, to reiterate to the players that 
you know, there's going to be upcoming games where they're going to be needed and, you know, we're not, it's not one out to bring someone in and, and they let the team down. They've, they've got to come in and perform, but, um, you know, we're, we're working hard and they're working hard to make sure they're in the, in the best shape possible and they understand the roles and responsibilities. It's not just about not playing. You've got to be looking at what your, the player in front of you is doing at the minute and, and what he's doing in and out of possession and how he's affecting the game and, and what your role is when you do play. How do you size up tomorrow's opposition at South End? Uh, I know recent record would say that they're maybe a little bit out of form once again, but actually they've given themselves every opportunity now of, of staying in this league. How wary do you have to be of them? Yeah, we, we think it's going to be a really tough game. Um, you know, we've watched them and analysed them quite a bit. Um, they've definitely got threats. They're very unpredictable. Uh, they like to press high. They've got long throws. You know, they've all these stuff that we have to, we have to take into account going into the fixture. So... You know, we're anticipating a, a tough game. What kind of, of game do you expect it to be then? Do, do, you, do you see yourself trying to dominate possession in that respect or will you give them some respect in their own right? No, I think the last two games we have dominated possession. Um, we've had, you know, over 50, 58%, I think it is, in, in both games or around that number. Um, so you've got to see how the game pans out. Um, We've, we've also not had possession in some games and, and come away with a win. Um, not, as, not as much possession, should I say. Um, so it's just a balance. Um, and, and let's see how the game goes. We'll, we'll be trying to dominate in every area. You know, if that's we dominate with the ball or without the ball, uh, controlling the game is key. We've spoken before about how you enjoy the title of underdogs and how that's played into your, to your narrative of late. But naturally, they will be the underdogs in this game. So how will you deal with being outwardly the the, the, the favourites? I think, yeah, you, you know, you can, you can be the favourites, but you can still uh, have that underdog mentality where you're, um, you're having something in your brain which is telling you you've got to do everything in your powers to, to get the win. And that's been, you know, said to the players from me and Mark, we've said, you know, this could be one of our toughest games because of the threats that they have. And it's going to be a different challenge, one that we've not faced so far, um, you know, with the, the strengths that they do have. So... I think we just again go into to um, to propose the game plan and make sure we perform well. How big a week could this be with Southend and then Barrow next? Could this be in in terms of your own objectives this season? Yeah, it's you know the two games are, are crucial. Um, where like any game, confident that we're we're going to go in and and go for the win, and and we're hoping to do that. Um, we're confident, but you know, sort of like winning and and having good runs sometimes breeds overconfident um, parts, but, you know, we've got to rein everybody in and know that everything that we do, it's all about the next game, you know, irrelevant of what we've done before. Finally, from me, just on the on the January window, Connor, obviously still a bit of time remaining. Um, can you give us any updates at all on, on how you're progressing and whether or not there will be any players still to arrive at Valley Parade? Yeah, I think, um, you know, hoping to get some more over the line. Um, and again, if, if they're right for us and we're right for them, we'll will surely look to strengthen, um, a bit like what Mark said the other, the other night. Yeah, just one player, I did mention it to Mark on Saturday, one player that has been noted is, is Conor McElhaney at, at Oldham. Um, is that someone that you're genuinely monitoring and, and, and do have an interest in? Um, again, his he's, he's name's on the list. Um, how high on there it is, um, you know, he's probably not a, a priority and main target um, for, for some reasons. You know he's he's a good player. He's got he's got goals, um, but also we're looking at um, the bigger picture um, and sort of doing the the due diligence, like we've said, and making sure that he's he's the right fit for Bradford City, even though he's a good player. It is that forward wing area that still remains a, a, a priority for you if you were to recruit anyone. Yeah, I think higher up the field, we're we're looking to um, give us a little bit more, a bit more ammo. Cheers, Connor. That's great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, Connor. Hi. Um, obviously, you've travelled down to Cambridge on Saturday. Now it's a trip to South End. How much difference has the COVID restrictions made to how you deal with, with particularly the long away trips? Yeah, it's just it's changed how um, you know which which bus we do take down there. Um, obviously, the the ones that face each other and stuff with the tables has not been um, allowed. Um, players have got to wear to wear masks. Um, and got to be socially distant when when they're on uh, on the coach. So 
Um, it's definitely taken its toll, um, as in it's a lot different to how it used to be. Um, but again, everybody's everybody's buying and everybody's trying their best to to make it a safe environment. And presumably you can't do the, the stops that you used to do to let them stretch their legs and things on the way down. Well, obviously we've got services, um, you know, that, that we can stop off at and just to, to get people, you know, walking a, around a little bit. And obviously you've got um, people with, with masks going into services and making sure that um, the protocols are in place. And, you know, if they want to stop for a coffee, they, they can do that, especially when we've got, you know, a four or five hour journey journeys ahead and um, looking back at, at Saturday and then the previous game to that which was Port Vale of course that's two clean sheets for Sam you must be really pleased with how he's come in and just slotted in completely perfectly yeah Sam's done done really well when he's come in um, and I think that just hopefully gives him a little bit more confidence going into his, uh, his future games but again I think credit to, to the back four and who, who get the main credit but you know, it comes from the top. It comes from the wingers pressing fullbacks. It comes from the midfielders putting pressure on the ball and going man to man in midfield. So we see it all as as a collective effort, and you know that's going forwards and, and defending the goal as well. But yeah, Sam's Sam's made a really good start. Hope it continues. Just away from Bradford City, we've heard the news this morning that Frank Lampard has been sacked by Chelsea. How frustrating is it for you as, as a young coach that? particularly higher up young coaches seem to get so much criticism and not give them the chance to develop themselves as coaches. Yeah, I think it, when you go into that to that environment, you, you know the risks that it possesses. Um, obviously, you're dealing with, with world-class um, elite footballers. Frank Lampard was also one of them. But ultimately, when you go into those positions, like any, any manager, you, you're under pressure to perform. And, and I'm sure, you know, Frank did his... Frank Lampard did his best um, to make it happen, um, but obviously there's, there's more in you know there's things that we don't know about potentially and and other factors what, which may have gone against him. But um, you know it, everybody's different, no matter what age you're at and what part of your career you've you've got to do a good job. And you know unfortunately Frank Lampard's lost his job. Okay, thanks very much and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Hi Connor. Hello. Um, you were saying earlier about obviously the team needs to score, perhaps score a few more goals. Is, is that, you know, I know it's been a great run and the performance has been very good. Is that, is that one sort of slight frustration for you that perhaps you're not turning that those performance levels into goals and probably more points because of that? Yeah, I think it, it highlights an area um, straight away which uh, we, need to, we need to improve. Um, I think, you know, you look at the defensive record, it's two conceded in six games there. Um, and if we keep that up, but add more goals, um, we're in a really good place. So um, our aim is to is to improve going forward, um, but also to keep this you know the solid the solid um, structure behind the ball to make sure that we um, we don't concede. But I think we are creating chances. We've got players in there who, who've got goals in them. So we're hoping it it it, it does it it does give us. Um, more goals going forward and you know I think with Danny Rose addition as well he gives you a different type of goal as well with a lot of long ranges um, you know and when he's around the box when you see him shooting from 35 yards if you imagine him shooting from 18 yards you know it's probably past the keeper before he can dive so um, we're excited to to be adding more goals to the game yeah Gareth Evans was saying he, he was unfortunate enough to get in the way of one of them shots and he said he, he can certainly hit a ball can he oh yeah yeah, he's probably hurting that. I think hit Levi in the first half as well. Yours? Yeah, are you there? <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as you say, you know, you've got, you've got a man with that sort of power on a shot. Yeah, yeah, like I say, he's, he's got some some shot on him and, um, you know, off both feet, it's not like he's just one-footed either. Um, I think he's, he's so good at just shifting left or right and then hitting straight away. Um, we're, we're just excited um, and hopefully some of the players around him will, will take confidence from him doing it as well. But as you say, you know, the team are creating chances. It's not like you're being tight, but you're not creating anything, is it? It's, you know, it's, it, you're, it's working at both ends of the field. It's just, as you say, getting that reward now. Yeah, and I think when you watch us, you don't think we're, you know, we're just keeping loads of players behind the ball when we're attacking. We're, we're going for it. You know, we've got players four or five, six around the edge of the box, in the box. And we're looking to pen teams in. Um, you know, just unfortunately, the last 
last couple of games we've not managed to score, but that's something we're looking to improve. And obviously, and speaking to Paulie just before you, and he, he was sort of saying about, you know, you're going to get South inside, they're, they're desperate for the points, but equally you, yourselves are to try and pull away. But it's going to be one of those games where, you know, you could say the first goal could be very important here because simply when a team at the bottom, if, if they start well, get the tails up, but equally if you strike the first blow, you know, they might be thinking, here we go again, sort of thing. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, that's football for you. It's no different. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping to go down there and, and score early on. Um, and hopefully that that helps us as a team, um, you know, to, to get even more. Um, but I think the, the, the mentality of, you know, um, if we, you know, do concede or we do go one up, that, you know, the next goal is is even more important. So we've just got to have that, that mindset where... Um, we're, we've, we're experienced as as a team and, and we know what's going to happen. You know, if, if we score or we concede, we know how that changes the game and, and what we can do to to manage the game in both ways as well. And obviously you get a positive result. It, it perhaps gets rid of that label of a relegation battle because at the moment people look at it and think 24 versus 20, I thought it's a big game at the bottom sort of thing. So it'd be, it'd be nice to sort of get that off the table, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be, it'd, it'd be really good for everyone. Obviously we're... A couple of games behind, and we're looking to capitalise on on those games um, and add some points. That's for sure. Best of luck tomorrow, anyway. Thank you, Connor. How, how has it been um, integrating so many new signings and and, and hopefully more to come um, during the season? Because although you haven't had a game, you've had lots to prepare for. Yeah, um, no, it's been good. It, it's been good getting getting some new faces in. Um, you know, everybody's different. Um, you know, you got some characters in there who who are lively as well, who are really good people. So, you know, when they when they come into the training ground and and they're hungry and they want to get better and they want to get into the team, it's been a, it's been a, a joy, really. I mean, do, do you think for any team when when you bring players in in January, it just sort of lifts the, lifts the mood to have different faces, whether you're doing well or badly at the time? Yeah, I think there's there's that initial excitement of, of something new um, and, and sussing what that person's about straight away. If you're, if you're a player, you're looking at how good he is, how he's going to help the team. Um, is he a good person to have around the place? So, um, you know, it's been, um, it's been good to get the new lads in, that's for sure, yeah. Does it, does it just feel a bit fresher generally? You know, we were talking the other week about how you had clear midweeks for the first time to actually spend a bit of training ground work with the players and obviously the postponements have sort of added to that. Does it, does it almost feel like, you know, you've, you've, you've gone up a level since, since three weeks ago? I think, yeah, I think the more time that we, we have with the players, we're looking for that development of the team and the individuals. Um, so far, we probably said, you know, we're getting happier um, after each game as in what we're after is in the game model. You know, the players are starting to understand and um, what we're after in, in against different teams, against different formations, and hopefully they they can digest that and, and they can use it longer term um, if that's with us. Have you been able to be a bit more ambitious in what you ask of them as well? I'm just thinking at the start, you know, when you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, was it, although you changed things, was it a bit more limited in what you could do? Um, I would I think it's it's been more building on on the the initial information and and just layering layering the detail of of what we've been working on. So, um, you know, we give them some ideals and principles and the way that we play, and and we've just been trying to add add on to that really. So it has given us time, yeah, it has given us more time to work. Yeah, and and in in terms of the in terms of the lads who who've come in, I mean, you you know, you mentioned the the excitement of them, but obviously there's there's a lot of quality as well. You've, you've talked about Danny's qualities and, and Jordan's pace and what have you. Do you feel like you've got more more dimensions as a squad? Yeah, yeah, I think we've we've definitely strengthened this window um, with the players that we've brought in. So, you know, that that is exciting on its own. The, the players who have come in have, you know, made us, you know, look at the team even more, look at, you know, there's where we can bring subs on and how much of an impact we can we can make in games, and I think we look we look um, a better squad here at the minute. Hoping to make it better as well. Of course, yeah. Have, have the five subs helped in that respect as well? And the fact that you've maybe been able to see a little bit more of players, and obviously been able to use players more. Yeah, um, obviously we've we've only used um, 
won in the la- in the last two games, if I'm right. Um, so I've won each game. So I think when you make changes, it's got to be for the right reasons. Um, obviously, the last game we we made one um, with with Jordan, um, which you know it, it was for a certain reason, and and we knew that games were going to come up. Um, fast, so we've got to we've got to make sure we, the players are in in good conditions, and and if we need to use the five subs, we're, we'll definitely do that. But we want to make sure that the level doesn't come down if we do make subs. And obviously, we know the financial reality at the moment. If if more players do come in, we'll more have to go out. If yeah, if that's right, if that's right for the club, and we feel that maybe somebody's not going to get the game time that they want, um, or maybe we get somebody in that's. And potentially better um, long term than, than the player that's already in, then that, that they are options. Uh, but until that happens, we you know we we just look to get better with every signing. Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City.